what is supply? We have been talking about demand for quite some time and when we talked about demand what we meant a function of price and quantity demanded function of price and quantity demanded or quantity, quantity demanded, demanded as a price. function of price. market price. Okay. What is the demand function? It is a function of market. Quant uh, market price. It gives quantity demanded as a function of market price. Now, we are talking about not the consumer side, not the buyer side, but we are talking about producer side or seller side. Supply gives you the willingness to sell, you know, at a particular price. So, remember earlier I relate, I what I talked about is how marginal value relates to quantity demanded. Here we will introduce a concept called marginal cost. What is marginal cost? Same sir, increasing by one unit and the cost to produce. One more unit. One more unit. Cost to produce one more unit. Okay. Cost to produce one more unit. So, again think about it. If your cost to produce is 5, again it is a made up number, nothing sacrosanct about this number. The cost to produce one unit is 5 rupees and you can sell it in the market for 10 rupees. Will you produce it? Of course, you will produce it because by producing you can gain 5 rupees on this unit. But if price to produce one additional unit is 5 rupees and you can sell it in the market for 4 rupees, will you produce it? No, you will not because you will spend 5 rupees, but you will get only recover only 4 rupees and you will incur a loss of 1 rupees that is why you would not produce. So, there we learn demand is a downward sloping curve. Why demand is a downward sloping curve? Because diminishing marginal value as well availability of alternatives. Can you make some comment about supply curve? Is it downward sloping, it is fixed or it is upward sloping? It is upward sloping. All of you know it is upward sloping. Again, why it is upward sloping? Sir, not diminishing, but. Sir, because if prices increases, uh, profits would increase for a. Yes, sir. So, to, to let us look at, let us look at again concepts very similar to diminishing marginal value and availability of alternatives. Okay? One that increasing marginal cost. I am not saying that marginal cost always increases, but most of the time it does increase. Okay? Marginal cost does increase for most of the range. Like let us say it is about selling mango in the market, you have a tree, probably getting the first mango from the tree would be quite easier because it will be on low lying branch. But as you want to get more and more mango, you have to climb tree and it will be costly for you. So, cost would keep on increasing if you want to get one more mango. So, that means that marginal cost is increasing, that is one. The second is again availability of alternative job, not alternative item. Right now, you are it is about catching, it is about grabbing a mango from a tree. Let us say by grabbing that mango, you can make 5 rupees. You sell it in the market and you get 5 rupees, but let us say you also know how to catch fish. You can go to a pond and start catching fish. Probably, you know, it would be easier, you know, the effort probably it will cost you 3 rupees to catch a fish and that will fetch you 10 rupees from the market. So, availability of alternative jobs. Okay. <coughs> Let me elaborate it little more. Right now, let us say market price is 5 rupees. Again, made up example, market price is 5 rupees. And let us say you are willing to supply 
5 units of mango. Okay. Why? Because up to 5 units of mango, your marginal cost is less than 5. But above 5 mangoes, your marginal cost is above 5 rupees. That is why you would not move from 5 mangoes to 6th mango. Is it clear? <coughs> but now, let us say market price goes up from 5 to 6. What will happen to your willingness to supply? You will at least supply the same amount of mangoes that you were supplying earlier and probably some more. Okay? Fine? Okay. Now, second way to look at it that if market price was 5 rupees, let us say you were not willing to supply any mango because you are not very efficient in taking mangoes from tree, you do not know how to climb a tree, you are scared that you would fell down you and hurt yourself. So, you, 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 you are not interested in that and what you typically do is that you catch fish and sell it in the market. But if price of mango starts climbing up, you would realize that it is beneficial for you to sell mangoes rather than catching fish. So, that is the reason because of these two reasons increasing marginal cost and availability of alternative jobs. Okay? It makes supply curve an upward sloping curve. Is it clear? Any doubt about it? Okay. So, it is upward. Again, I am drawing a straight line, but not you know it is not necessary. It can be something different. It can be like this, but what we uh, what I mean to say is that supply curve is always going to be an upward sloping curve. Okay? And the related to the marginal cost, if M C that is sort for marginal cost, it is less than P, you will sell that particular unit in the market and you will keep on selling till M C becomes equal to P. Fine? Okay. One more thing I want to emphasize that I did not do in the demand side because concepts are very, uh, very much similar. So, you would learn now here look at it when we are drawing the supply curve, <coughs> supply curve is always P on y axis and Q on x axis. We are talking about an upward sloping curve, but now let us draw another curve M C marginal cost as a function of quantity. And what we talked about earlier in the earlier slide that increasing marginal cost. If that is true, how we can draw? We can draw like this that marginal cost is increasing as you are trying to sell more and more quantity in the market. Fine? Can we say that can we find any relationship between this and this? Are they related? Do not say that I have you know here it looks smaller here it looks bigger. So, these are not the relations. Okay. And I have deliberately drawn that both are upward sloping that is very clear, but other than that marginal cost must be more th less than less price. Think little bit more. Let me tell you that these two curves are the same. You draw M C versus Q and <coughs> change this M C to P you will get this curve. How is it possible? Think about it. This is true to large degree. Later on we will find exception to this, but right now let us not get into the exceptions. See what is happening. If M C is less than P, you will keep on selling. Of course, here assumption is that Q is a continuous variable. Okay? Q is a continuous variable it is possible to sell fraction amount of this particular good. So, when till when you will keep on selling till M C becomes equal to P. Okay? So, that is what I am saying that here P is equal to M C. So, these two curves are the same curve. Is it clear? If we are talking about just to revise the concept that we have learned, let us look at this concept in the demand context what we have here is P and Q and here we have downward sloping curve. Okay? And here we have marginal value and Q, it is a downward sloping curve. This curve and this curve, these two are the same curve. 
same using the same concept till when you will keep on y till m v becomes equal to p is it clear continuing with the same in the graph they are the same let us erase the demand part in the graph they are the same, but how about remember when we write it as a mathematical formulation what do we write it m c as a function of q that is what we are writing, but here in context of marginal cost we are writing marginal cost is a function of quantity, but when we are writing the supply function how are we going to write quantity supplied is a function of p when we are taking this equation to the graph, we are putting m c on y axis and q on x axis, but when we are taking the supply function, when we are taking the supply function to the you know graph making, we are reversing deliberately you know because of our convention in economics, we are putting q s on x axis and p <coughs> on y axis. So, when we draw the graph they are the same graph, but when we write the equation they are inverse of each other is it clear. And how we are getting the inverse rather than changing the graph we are changing the axis remember the mathematical concept just bit of digression y is equal to f x is a function and if you want to figure out the inverse of this function, what is the inverse of this function x as a function of y. So, instead of changing the function what we are changing here is the axis look at it that is what happening here the axis are being changed. So, that is why these two are inverse of each other when we talk about mathematical formulation but when we take talk about the graph they are the same graph not in mathematics though because mathematics if you are drawing the inverse the graph of inverse function it would be inverse but in economics we have convention that quantity always goes on x axis that's why we get the same graph is it clear now we have already learned you see that it's because the concepts are very similar to demand we do not have to go into that much of detail what we have learned is that supply function is a uh, is an upward sloping function <coughs> while demand is a downward sloping function other thing that also you should always keep in mind that movement along curve and shift of shift of the supply curve. When we are talking about the supply function as we talked about the demand function earlier, we are talking ceteris paribus meaning that all other factors are held fixed or held constant and we are changing the price of this particular good and we are observing its impact on quantity supplied in the market. So, we are moving along the curve, but when we held the price of this good the same and change other any other factor we will learn pretty soon what are those factors which impact the supply function, but we change those factors what do we get at the same price we get either more or less of quantity supplied and we do it for all the prices what what we get is that shift in supply function is it clear. So, let me say here this is the shift these two we have to understand we should not get confused between these two and it is very very important fine ok. Now, we have talked about individual supply curve earlier what we did 
we moved from individual supply curve to market supply curve. Again, we have to repeat the same process. How can we get the market supply curve? We will horizontally add all the individual supply curve and we will get the market supply curve. Okay? So, take an example. For the person 1, first supplier, it is 10 plus 2 p and for the second supplier, let me let me just rewrite it. Okay, let me okay, let us continue with this. Sorry. Ten plus five P. What I want to tell you whenever you do this, see when you are drawing the supply curve or demand curve, it is although we are the function is q as a function of p, but when we draw what do we draw p as a function of q. So, many times in books or in many other places you will see that supply function is not <coughs> given as quantity supplied as a function of p, but p as a function of quantity supplied they are basically the same thing. Mathematically speaking they are inverse of each other, but in economics the terminology we in interchangeably we use from context it should be clear that they are inverse of each other okay? and you should adjust accordingly. So, now you have these two supply function can you get the market supply function? So, I leave it to you you can get the market supply function on your own. <coughs> 